now we see this second seal. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat there and to take peace from the earth, and they, uh, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. For Remember, Jesus said, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. We read that, right? You see the parallel. Now I say, and there's a red horse there with a big sword. But I say, consider this. I want you to think, think about this and, and see how close we are to the end. In, from 1900 to 1946, the world experienced more than 120 armed conflicts. That's over two per year. From 1946 to 2001, and some of my stats are a little too old, I would like to have even newer stuff, but this actually serves the point. Between 1946 and 2001, there were 225 wars, which were four a year. It doubled. And this, was, this goes all the way back to 2001. Just think what it is today. You, got, you can't even go places in the world. Without, you, you can get your head cut off. There's people that blow themselves up. How do you get somebody to believe if they blow themselves up, they're going to get seven virgins? How do you, how do you, how do you get some, the Muslims I'm talking about? How do you get somebody to believe that? Besides that, if you blow yourself up, what good's it going to do? Your pieces are gone. <laughs> Here's a part of you, and there's a part of you, and you got seven virgins, all right. <laughs> Besides that, if you do a, um, I, I know somebody that uh, that knew Arabic, and they actually read the words, the the prophecy of Muhammad. They said he didn't say you'd get seven virgins. He said you'd get seven white raisins. <laughs> That's the word in Arabic. And so they've been teaching these, these poor men that they're going to get these virgin and white raisins in that time were precious. And so he was, Muhammad was trying to describe how God was going to reward them. And they were very rare. And he said, you get these white raisins. And people are giving their lives up and blowing up their parts. Let's, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's scary. Then... In 1914 through 1918, we had World War I. You think, you think that wasn't a sign of the Red Horse? Total mobilized military force of the Allied nations, which was France, British Empire, Russia, Italy, and the U.S., six other smaller countries, and more than 42 million. Of this number, about 5 million were killed in action, with over 3 million civilian casualties. The cost incurred by the Allies was approximately $194 billion. That don't sound like a lot when we're talking trillions today. Incidentally, did you know that Barack Obama, in his administration, doubled the national debt? It was like eight, eight trillion, and I mean that's after George Bush. They blame everything on George Bush, but that's after George Bush, eight trillion dollars. Obama brought it up to now it's what twenty. Oh my goodness, and he keeps going. I mean it'd be great if I could just sit there and write checks. I do have some of those plastics that I, can, but I found out you can get yourself in a load of trouble. But anyway. We also had on the other side a total mobilized military force of central powers, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Turkey, Bulgaria, was about 23 million, of which over 3 million were killed in action. Their cost was something over 86 billion, and it took, look at this, just from World War I, it took until September 2010 for Germany's World War I debt to finally be paid off. 2010. Then you have World War II. World War I wasn't bad enough. Here goes that sword, you know, with that red horse again, riding through. Combined figures for both allies and Axis power. 105 million total mobilized forces, of which 15 million were killed in action. Up to 34 million civilians were killed, and the total cost was $1.6 trillion. And if you lived back then, $1.6 trillion was a lot. And nothing like trillions when they talk about today. Anybody know who this is? 
<laughs> you can't even, I mean, everybody in the world knows who this is, don't they? Look at this. The Holocaust, Adolf Hitler, you can see the red horse uh, right there on his picture. Six killing centers were located, um, what does it say, Lo I can't read it there, uh, located near Poland. Uh, multiple rail railroad lines facilitated a constant flow of train loads of victims. At Treblinka, some 750,000 or more Jews were murdered by a staff of approximately 150. Fewer than 100 known survivors of Treblinka were found at, at Sobibor. Up to 250,000 Jews were murdered in carbon monoxide gas chambers. A revolt was staged uh, there by 300 prisoners in the camp while attempting to escape. Many were killed. By the end of the war there were only 50 known survivors. At Belzec up to 600,000 Jews and a few thousand gypsies were murdered. And at, at uh, uh, Kel uh, Kelmino up to 360,000 Jews were killed. Thousands of gypsies, Poles, Soviet prisoners of wars were also exterminated. Uh, Brickenau uh, was the largest and deadliest, I'm up in the right hand corner, of all the Nazi death camps. Here were the biggest, newest, most efficient gas chambers, which used the vapors from Ziklon uh, B pellets to kill Jews, Poles, gypsies, and Soviet prisoners of war. Many more Jews, 1.1 million were killed here than the other groups represented. At Majanek, uh, nearly 500,000 from diff 28 different countries were murdered, according to the Polish sources about 360,000, more than 70%, many of which were Poles, died there from starvation, exhaustion, disease, and beating. Seven gas chambers were employed using Ziklon B pellets, as were the camp's two wooden gallows. Is that bad? Is that bad? That's a red horse. And things haven't even started yet. Many contemporary historians and scholars view the Holocaust as an anomaly, um, which is a freak occurrence. How many believe that? There was just a freak occurrence. We don't have to worry about that. That man is not like that. No, this guy was like the son of the devil. In fact, we brought this up in a previous, when we were looking at the seven churches. We, we talked about Hitler just a little bit. We said Hitler was a type of antichrist. His, his reign of persecution was a seven-year period. He did to the Jews what's going to happen to the whole world during the Antichrist, right? He was a type and a pattern, I'll guarantee you that. And that's why I say his, his body was probably burned. Uh, not only do they report that, but that's the, the Antichrist is going to be thrown in the lake of fire, it says. Uh, they believe that man has now developed to a higher order, more consider, considerate, tolerant than the ancients. In fact, the only problem they have with tolerance is us. Bible believers. Get rid of the Bible believers. And then we can have true tolerance where everybody thinks, you know, accepts all religions equally. That's never going to happen to this guy. Because I, I'm standing on this earth with one thing in mind. I'm going to tell people who Jesus is. Now, look at, look at here out of that same... Uh, Olivet Discourse, Matthew chapter 24, 21 through 22 and tw verse 25. says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. How many will be saved? None. none. If God doesn't intervene, none will be saved. But for the elect's sake... Those days shall be short, and that may very well represent the rapture. Now, I don't know. I can't say that for sure, but it sounds pretty good anyway. <clears throat> Behold, I have told you before. In other words, Jesus said, don't be surprised at any of this. I've warned you. I've warned you about this. I told you before. Israel plays a major, major... God is not done with, with Israel. And yet most of the church says God gave up on Israel a long time ago. As far as they're concerned, and you can look at their doctrine and their teachings all the way down from when they were founded. They never taught Israel was going to be reestablished. Only people who read and believed the Bible did. So there's a problem because most of the church didn't. In other words, they read it, 
but they didn't believe it. It's not enough to read it. You have to believe it. This is still the second seal we're talking, or the second seal, uh, the red horse, where we can see here in verse 6, You shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye uh, be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And uh, so many have said that now they realize that uh, maybe that, uh, that, that sword in the red horse's hand, which is so destructive, maybe it is nuclear. Maybe it represents nuclear. We're living in a nuclear age. Yeah. That's right. You know, one of the reasons they come up with the United Nations is to try to prevent all of this, uh, these other countries from having nuclear weapons. How, what, how good of a job have they done? We, in areas down here, you got these, uh, you know, the, the ISIS uh, troops with their missile launchers or whatever. 